fashion insider friends. What is up? This is the Fashion Crimes Podcast, where I cover all things fashion, style, shopping, style inspiration, and interview incredible small business owners who are changing the fashion industry for the better. Yes, I'm the best friend you never knew you needed and the poster child for fashion over 40. And I mean, way after 40. Say it with me. Fashion and style are your friends, not your enemies. I'm Holly Cates, your favorite personal stylist, and let's keep it real, the only Holly you need to know. Turn it up, because I got a lot to say, and I am super stoked you're here. Hey, fashion besties. We are in the thick of summer, and it's like being in a steam bath if you live in the South, a brick oven if you live in New York, and a sauna if you live anywhere in Utah or below or around Utah, I should say. The reason why I know this is because we just got back from Amangiri, which is in Canyon Point, Utah, which is about 10 miles from Page, Arizona, right near an Indian reservation. Now, going to Arizona in the desert in July is not usually what people do, but hey, you know, we like to go against the grain in this house. We also did go to Israel in July one year, so obvi, we did not learn our lesson. However, this certainly did not stop me from looking fabulous and finding something that was, quote, I'm using air quotes here, desert chic. And instead of using the hashtag OOTD for outfit of the day, we used it for outfit of the desert. Ha! Huh, look at me go. Don't know if you saw our Fashion Crimes podcast Instagram page. I was quoted both in First for Women Online and Yahoo.com on the best boob tape. Boob tape? You might be asking, what do you do with boob tape? As we know, fashion is all smoke and mirrors. The more secrets you have to help yourself look great in clothes, the better your wardrobe can serve you and the more fashion risks you might be willing to take. Let's start at the beginning. Getting dressed is like following a recipe. You have to get the right ingredients when you cook or when you bake, and building an outfit is no different. When you're getting dressed every day, you should be wearing the correct fitting undergarments to support your outfit or at least figure out what will serve you best. That's what your clothes should be doing for you, serving you and making you look your best and feel your best as well. When you're deciding what to wear, choosing the correct undergarments can make or break really how you feel about yourself and your clothes. When working in people's closets, this is rule number one. The older and out of date your undergarments are, the more unsexy and unflattering you feel. In order to rectify this problem, all you have to do is take inventory, like I would say every year or so. You know which underwear and bras make you feel the best. Then you get rid of the rest. And that rhymed. Some people take it so far as to match underneath, and look, I'm all for it, go you, but I rarely do match underneath. Let's be honest, I don't have that many matching sets, but if that's how you roll, I'm impressed. I am. I've certainly mentioned this before, and it still holds true. Seamless underwear is best. Doesn't really matter if you wear a thong or fullback style, boy shorts or the cheekies or whatever you're most comfortable in. When you wear underwear with seams, you can usually tell through your clothes and it's just not necessary because seamless rules all. It just does. I find that they are actually the most comfortable as well. So please note that some of my top picks will be on your Pinterest board for the week with some of my favorite styles and brands. I don't stick to one brand per se. I have several different brands that range from cheap to expensive. Most of what I have is moderately priced and has lasted for several years. Those that are faded and that I've worn to death, I toss and replace with new. I also have underwear categories, just FYI, only three. I have regular underwear, workout underwear, and underwear that I only sleep in. Now, those categories work for me. If you don't have your categories, just figure out what you do the most. You exercise, are you running errands most of the time? I do not wear my nice underwear to work out in. Could I? Sure. But it also makes me wear and rotate them more if I'm not just wearing the same ones all the time. Brands I love for underwear are as follows. Commando, 
Hanky Panky, Casabella, and on Gossamer. There are so, so many more. I mean, millions more. But if you're in the market for some new ones, start there. Undergarments in general are something that you don't want to skimp on. A subject that I have been asked about as of late is back shaping. Right where your bra strap is, right under your shoulder blade, next to your armpit, that can be a problem area, really both in the front and in the back. If you're having problems with smoothing on your back, newsflash, you need a wider band on your bra. Let's go over the anatomy of a bra. Some of the pics I found are super detailed that are all on your Pinterest board for the week. I wanted to go over the basics as the more you understand what your bra is supposed to do for you, the better the fit you're going to look for when you're shopping. So first, obvi are the cups. Now, this can be divided into upper and lower cups, even upper and side cups. But let's just discuss a full cup for now. Your breasts should not be spilling over the top or the sides. If they are, then your cup is too small. If your breast isn't filling up the cup to the top or is gaping at the top or the side, then the cup is too large. The straps over your shoulder, they should not be hurting you, should not be leaving indentions or making your skin red, just FYI. If that's happening on your current bra, you need a wider strap and it's also too tight. Also, the straps are adjustable and you would be shocked. I see this time and time again on how people do not know how to adjust the straps or where to adjust them to. Your boobs should be supported and up, which helps you out because it makes your waist look smaller. Now, it might feel weird to you, but you have to adjust the straps to get them in the right place. Don't assume when you buy a new bra that the straps are automatically in the right position and they don't need to be adjusted. Your breasts should feel lifted. Now, I'm a firm believer in underwire. There's plenty of good bras without them, but that's what I wear and I always usually recommend that to clients. The center gore or the gore is the fabric in the middle of the cups that connects them right in between your boobs on your breastbone on your chest. Now, the gore should be on your breastbone, touching your skin. It should be flat. If you can fit your fingers through your breastbone and the bra, it doesn't fit. The side of the cup will have what's called a side wing and boning, which is essentially the side structure of the bra designed to hold you in or shape you right there on the side of your breast to under your arm where the band starts. Your boobs should be on the inside frame of your body, not out to the sides. Just think in and up, in and up. The band, which goes around the circumference of your back and the front and around your body, should be wide enough to smooth you out. So if you have like a skinny strap that's like going across your back and you feel like you're hanging over a little bit, your strap is too thin, you need a wider strap. If it isn't, your cups might fit, but you need a wider strap to give you support in that specific problem area on your back. A wider strap should be more comfortable and have enough stretch so it's not leaving indentions or marks on your back and on your sides. This is why a proper fitting with a professional is super important. When you try on your own bra, you might think it fits well, but a professional can tell you if it's fitting you properly all around your body, not just the cups. Then, of course, you have the closure, which is the hook and eye, and it usually gives you three adjustable sizes. Again, pick one that's not going to cut off your circulation, but one that feels comfortable and won't bother you all day. You should put your bra on and not think about it. If you're thinking about it, if it's annoying you or bothering you, it doesn't fit properly. For more information on bras, please go back and listen to episode 111 with bra expert Janae Luciani Senna. She is the bra queen, okay? The bra queen. She does TV segments all the time. I interviewed her. She's great. Boob tape, nipple covers, and backless bras 
all give the illusion of wearing a bra without the pesky straps or the band showing when you want to wear something backless, strapless, or super low cut. Yes, you can wear any of these items regardless of your breast size. I promise you. The more breast tissue you have, obviously, the more tape or the bigger the cup you have to wear. But this can be grounds for a very successful, sexy outfit, if done correctly. As a stylist, I've definitely seen boob tape in my career, and it can work wonders if you are open to trying it. The key is to keep it smooth and comfortable so you can wear it all evening or day. I mean, I would assume you would wear it at night, but I recommend practicing with it. Please, please practice before using it. Usually the boob tape will come with like a little, it's not cotton, but it's like a, almost like a gauze pad. You put that over your nipple and then you put the tape over it. So I learned that when I contributed to this article. Always do a test strip first to make sure it doesn't irritate your skin if you're super sensitive. However, most of these tapes are hypoallergenic. There are some suggestions, of course, on the Pinterest board. So you know what? Give it a try. I personally love what's called butterfly cups. And I did not realize that until I did this research. These are stick-on cups that have a clasp in the middle. Obviously, it looks like a butterfly. That's been my jam for the past couple of years. I have worn and loved the new bra, literally the only one I have ever used because it was at the counter, literally at Bloomingdale's at checkout. And that's how I discovered it years ago. And I've worn the same one ever since. Now there are tons and tons to choose from. I recently just tried a silicone one. Imagine chicken cutlets with a clasp in the middle. <laughs> I mean, they're like squishy and they feel like, you know, an insert that you would put in your bra. I tried the silicone butterfly cups from Lingerie Solutions that I got from Walmart. I know, I know. I couldn't believe they had something like that. So I wanted to try it for research purposes for this episode, and I actually was impressed. They worked really well, and they're less than 20 bucks. So if you're super big, I don't recommend it for somebody who's got a lot of breast tissue or large breasts. I recommend it for somebody who needs... A little help because it is kind of push up and it gives you more volume for sure. Then I tried the same thing from a company called Gatherall. It was definitely the most expensive and the thinnest. It came in this little ass tube. I did not think it was going to work or hold me up. And I was actually pleasantly surprised. I think I like the new bra the best still. I think it's called the Feather Light. But all of these are really great choices. So if you're into boob tape, go for it. There's also boob tape cups that it's round on the bottom and you just kind of pull it up like next to your armpit. Or you can do the actual tape, which looks like skin tape. I mean, it looks like duct tape, but it's really not. Or you can try the tape. Really up to you. If you are in need of shapewear, there's lots of different brands and different price points. If you need support in other areas like your thighs or your stomach, dressing right for your body type is going to assist you in this problem. Looking for clothes with structure will do some of the heavy lifting for you. Now, what does that mean? Heavier fabrics that are thicker, garment construction that will increase the value of a garment like top stitching collars, shoulder pads, plackets, and high-waisted skirts and pants. So jeans are a great example of this. There are jeans that will give you both stomach and butt support. There's several companies that do this now. Look for tops that draw your eye down or garment details that show off your waist or your shoulders. If you have an oversized bust or if it feels like your stomach needs help, a high-waisted pant or skirt is your friend, I promise you. Also, pattern tops like animal prints, that can minimize a larger bust. Fashion crime. <coughs> Buying bigger or oversized clothes to hide the problem areas only make you look bigger. Perfect example. If you feel like your stomach needs assistance and you buy some flowy, I call them schmata tops, these flowy baby doll tops that cover your stomach, they look like maternity tops. You're not doing yourself any favors. 
by wearing oversized clothes or trying not to wear anything close to show your shape of your waist or your stomach. It actually does the opposite, I promise. If you need help in the stomach area, a high-waisted pant, jean, high-waisted short, skirt, if you wear it with a shorter top, it's going to emphasize your waist. Now, I know it doesn't feel like that, but I promise you that's how it works. It is a fashion risk, but if your waist is your best feature, show it off. This is for my curvy girls out there like me. If your arms or your shoulders are your best feature, show it off. Wear an off-the-shoulder top or dress. Wear a halter top. Make your clothes work for you. Show off. If your legs are your best feature, show them off, okay? That's what great style is all about. So if you have great legs and you think that you your stomach is a problem area, then you need to wear something that is going to show off your legs and then wear something around your waist so you look like you have an hourglass figure, okay? A lot easier said than done, but play up your good parts or what you like best about your body. Real shapewear is something that you wear, in my opinion, under a special occasion dress or any event where you need to feel super supportive or if you're getting your picture taken or something like that. I would not wear shapewear every day. It's exhausting and it's just not necessary. Let your clothes do the work for this. If you see lumps and bumps on your body, your clothes are too tight and they're not supporting you, okay? They're just not. If your clothes are billowy and flowy, trying to hide your problem areas, your clothes aren't doing you any favors. The great thing about shapewear for the top and bottom are that you can choose the amount of support that you need as it usually comes in light, medium, and heavy duty. And let me tell you, the heavy duty is hard to get on and it is real hard to get off. Camis are a great way to give yourself some stomach and back support if you're wearing a tighter top or dress. You actually step in from the very top and pull it over your hips and thighs and then pull it up to your boobs. One in neutral, black and white, those are the best ones to have. If you would like to feel pulled in on your lower stomach, your hips and thighs, now I'm talking about below your belly button, the traditional shapewear that looks like bike shorts, that's what I swear by. And I don't like these little ass short bike shorts. No, I wear them all the way to the knee, okay? Because I have bigger thighs and it rolls up. So I like the longer shorts. I might wear that if I have a like a tight skirt on. And I want a smoother shape in the back. So I have this dress I haven't worn yet. And I was like, I can't pull it off. And then Nolan's like, yes, you can. With shapewear, you certainly can. And he was right. Now, I need heavy, heavy duty shapewear. But if I wore that dress, I would certainly not be able to wear it without shapewear. But that's a perfect example of just wearing the bike shorts. If you put the cami and the shorts together, you actually have a one piece. So you can do that too. They come in like cat suits, like a bodysuit. You can buy a one piece or you can break it up just like any under, other undergarment, underwear, bras, boob tape. You really get what you pay for. It doesn't mean that you cannot get something for a good price, but you know the expensive shit is going to be good. I'm just saying for the care and maintenance, you can literally wash these items in with your regular laundry and lie it flat to dry. The reason why I say that is because the more elasticity that it loses, the less it helps you out. So you need to keep the fibers tight and drying them breaks the fibers down. Washing them too, but don't overwash. Lingerie bags can be used if you like that, okay? That keeps them from being thrown all around in the washer to prevent damage. Especially if you got a lot of people in your family and you're going to want to throw your nice stuff in there, it really can get damaged. So you can use a laundry bag. You can use a laundry detergent if you'd like, or a fabric softener if you'd like, or just regular detergent like me because I'm too lazy and I'm not going to buy that. But you can buy that. The stick on bras have a special wash that you can buy, or you can really wash it with soap and water. They're really great for like 30 or more wears. I have the original new bra I bought. It's embarrassing. I still have it. It's still sticky. It's not that sticky anymore, but I have worn that shit a lot. Okay, a lot. I have some new ones now, but I need to toss that one, but it lasted a long time. 
just remember, don't hang your bras. Please do not hang your bras by the straps to dry. And like I said before, do not overwash, okay? This is a really big problem that I see time and time again, especially with your clothes too. For underwear, of course, you're going to wash them every time. Who cares? But for shapewear, you need to get at least three to five wears before you wash it unless you are really schwitzing, dirty, or sweaty. Bras should be washed once a month, and it really just depends on how many wears you get per month. That's just a general guideline. Every time you wear a bra, you should not wash it. If you wear the same few bras every week, you should wash them every two you know, to three weeks, especially if you aren't getting sweaty or dirty. Unfortunately, the less you wash, the longer they last. Shapewear is never as strong as when you wear it for the first time. You try it on, you feel your best. You try it on for the 20th time, you're like, "Mm, my stomach's still hanging out a little bit. That's been in my experience. It really loses its elasticity over time. It's the same with the bra straps. The bra might fit in the cups, but if the band is stretched out, it's on its way out. And I have a couple of bras like that, too. I'm like, oh, I fucking love this bra. It's my favorite. And then I've worn it so much that it's a little bit big on the sides because the elasticity and I've worn it 100 times. When spending money on these types of things, just remember, it's the CPW, which is the cost per wear. If you buy one bra for $100, let's just use that as an example. Think about how many times you're going to wear that one bra in a year, probably 50 to 100, okay? Averaged out, it's just not that much for something that you're going to use close to three times a week or a year, just saying. So recap, these are the top five undergarments you need to have in your wardrobe. Seamless underwear, non-negotiable, okay? The correct fitting bras. People always ask me, how many bras should I have? I have a lot. You really need about eight to 10 bras, good ones. You can have some shitty ones that you wear around the house. That's fine. But you need to have five to seven really good ones that you can wear and feel great in. Okay. Three is not enough. I'm sorry. It's just not. If you have three, get three more. If you have 40, you don't need any more for a while. Okay. But you should have at least, you know, five to eight. And then that does include a strapless bra if you wear a strapless bra. This does not include sports bras. If you exercise a lot, that's a whole separate category. And if you work out consistently three to four times a week, you need at least 10 to 12 sports bras, okay? And they can fit just like a regular bra or you can get the kind, you know, with the V in the back, totally up to you. You got to have a backless bra or and slash or boob tape, okay? You never know. You might need it. Shapewear, which is broken up into camis and bike shorts. You need to get a support cami and then you need to get the bike shorts. Now, if you have really thin legs and no hips and no ass, you can probably wear the short ones. But if you're curvy like me, you're going to want to get the longer ones. But they do work and I love them. Some people really love the Spanx, the power panty. I don't love that as much. For me specifically, I like the bike shorts. So if you have something to add to this list, please let me know. But this is what you should have in your undergarment arsenal. So you are ready for anything and everything and you are ready to go. Okay. So when you set yourself up for success, this is what happens when you have a wedding or somebody asks you to do something last minute or you have a dinner you forgot, or blah, 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 then you can wear a sexy dress or run out and get something if you need it. And then you've got all of your supplies out and ready to go. I've had people ask me about thigh highs and tights and things like that. You're not wearing that now, but I do believe in the support tights for sure. Opaque tights. And I love fishnets. That's just me. I love the big ones and the small ones. But that is another subject for another time. But you can have those as well. That would be the sixth item that you need. Thank you so much for tuning in. If y'all have questions, let me know. Have you signed up for our email list? I even had someone reach out and say, I thought I was on the email list. Where is my newsletter? I'm not on the list. So I'm loving her super detailed follow-up. So you know what? I forwarded the email newsletter to her and she got it. She was very happy. 
Are you on the email list? Are you getting the newsletter? Did you please, and thank you, write us a review on Apple Podcasts? That would be incredible if you would do that for me. We are also up for a podcast award. We are going to put that in the show notes. It is a three-step process. I apologize for that in advance, but it makes the contest fair and true. Please vote for us in the arts category and for the podcast award. We are super excited to win and we already have our acceptance speech. And like I've always said before, it was an honor just to nominate myself. So check us in, check us out. Listen to us while you're in the car, you're in the grocery store, when you get some time to yourself, or maybe when you're exercising. But get all of these undergarments in your drawer. Don't let me come over and see that you don't have any backless bras or strapless bra or any boob tape. I want to see you trying the boob tape, okay? I had to research it and write about it, and I'm going to try it too. Thank you so much for listening. You guys have an amazing week. My name is Holly Cates. You're absolute, unbelievably, undeniably favorite personal stylist, the best friend you never knew you needed in fashion. Y'all have an amazing week. Make sure you write to me, tell me what you want to hear about, and then I will absolutely give you a shout out on the next episode. Y'all have a great week. Bye.